what is going on YouTube Justin Dez back with another episode of the Washington Nationals franchise here on MLB the show 23 we're cleaning house we're cleaning house after a disappointing season let's do it so to shake things up I know it's weird we're bringing them back we're gonna bring it back as our we're going to see how he does as our farm director. Then we're going to offer Garrett Miller a one-year deal, two-year deal, 44 years old, young, young guy. Hopefully we can get him. And Johnny Stewart is now the Rockies manager. Oh, and uh, Mr. Martin, yeah, he's uh, now the pitching coach for... Uh, the Boston Red Sox. So, fun. Here's the new guys that we have. Owen as our hitting coach. Darnell Coles as our pitching. Jess Tillman as our farm director. Lester Carr as our third. And then Jonathan Dixon as our first base. Welcome back, guys. This is the season four preview of the Nationals franchise here on MLB The Show. And as you can see... Early in the video, I was trying to figure out who was going to be our coaching staff, and here it is. Lorenzo Thornton, young guy, plus two pitching clutch, and walks per nine. Not too bad. Darren Johnson, hopefully uh, he can help with our hitting. He was up to be the manager, but he did not want it. Adrian Odom, I'm hoping he can help as well uh jonathan dixon as our first base coach lester carr as our third base and jess tillman as our farm director so after a 100 loss season we have completely cleaned house with the entire coaching staff we still have the same scouting staff but overall i just robert campbell figured clean house what why not so for the off season we only had three big ish trades uh gustavo Asenro from the dodgers we traded omar pena and tink hence uh then alberto santiago from the mariners for austin grover i think that was a cpu and the weird thing was i turned that off and then Ernesto Anando from the Padres for Francisco Mejia and Jake Bennett. And then we went back to the Padres to get Drake Baldwin for Aaron Ashby and Austin Charles. In terms of free agents, we signed Joey Gallo to a one-year $4 million deal as a backup outfielder. All of that, um, he is down in AAA for now. We signed Yu Chen for $4.1 million as the utility guy. We signed Taylor Rogers to a three-year deal. We signed Marcus Stroman for a two-year deal. Luis Urias for a one-year deal. Kyle Schwarber, he was an outfielder, but in spring training, we moved him to first on a $4.2 million deal. Raziel Iglesias, two years, $9 million. Mitch Keller, two years, 14 and then Griffin Cannon on a one-year $10.3 million deal. And then we just re-signed some guys, major, mostly major league, uh, or excuse me, minor league help and depth. So we are going to quickly go over the preview for season four, what I expect, all of that. So Griffin Cannon, he's on a one-year deal, 29 years old had I would say his almost his best year in terms of ERA definitely innings pitched wins for sure so he's coming off a career year hopefully he can be that ace that we have been missing as well Eric Lauer signed him to somewhat of a cheap-ish deal but he is not coming off the best year, but I figured he's better than Zach Plezak. Marcus Stroman, 
He's not, he also did not have the best year, but again, he's just a two-year rental. Worst case is we trade him. Mitch Keller, obviously, actually, he probably had he had a pretty solid year, not terrible. We know about Plezak, but I'm looking at Dylan Lesko. He actually improved very, very much. Now, 3.57 year RA is not great, but, you know, the fact that he started 30 games, went 10 and 7, struck out 161 batters, his whip went down, and his war is 3, which I don't know, I'm assuming that's good. Strikeouts per nine dipped. Walks dipped dramatically. He didn't give up as many homers as well. So I'm looking for a big, big year three. Well, mostly year two out of him. Jay Gardner, he is going to start down in AAA. Uh, he didn't have a terrible outing. He had that one outing that he got absolutely rocked. I believe it was against the Braves. But I think he needs to work on his control a little bit more. And I think the strikeouts per nine could definitely use some work as well. And then obviously Gustavo. This is the man who we traded for from the Dodgers. Not too shabby. Quentin Chambers, who we have. And then last year's first round pick, sixth overall, Todd Ortiz. His K per nine is amazing. Definitely want to work on his control as well. He, as of right now, he's one of the top prospects in baseball because for some reason I've noticed that uh, they give a lot of love at the beginning of the season to the uh, guys who just got drafted. Then Ernesto, Kevin Mesoda, but really it's Todd Ortiz, Chambers, Ascendo, and Jay Gardner who look to be the potential futures. And then I'm looking for Andrew Hudson to bounce back. He struggled mightily last year, but then he put up solid numbers in AAA. I'm hoping maybe he can come back to DC and maybe be the fifth or sixth starter. I don't expect him to be the ace, but I think he could be a really good bullpen arm. And then obviously Taylor Rogers is the big signing in the bullpen. We are keeping Danny Turner down in AAA for a little bit. He actually didn't do too bad last year. He didn't play as much as year one, but I want to keep him down in AAA, see how he does. Jared Booker, I want to keep him down in AAA for as long as we can, probably until September, because he's absolutely been killing it down in the closer spot in AAA. Lauren Hernandez, maybe Andrew Lamb, maybe I could see something out of them, I don't know. And then Sean Parker, shout out State of the Franchise, this is his guy. I could change it from Minnesota if you want, but he got drafted. He's up in AAA. I want to see what he can do as well. And then obviously Inglacius is a good kind of setup guy, closer. Meanwhile, Corey Brown, or Braun, who we traded from Minnesota last year, he didn't do too shabby. He did have one blown save, but three saves again. He had more action, so but I'm hoping to have him be the setup man, get his confidence up before making him the full time closer. What's interesting with Kyber because he's not doing too terrible. He did have a down year last year, and his contract is eight point seven million dollars, but he is getting older, and I wanted to give Trick Baldwin a shot. He seems like a solid, solid guy. Maybe not the best hitter, but a pretty good defender, younger. While I'm waiting for Edgar to kind of maybe get called up. And then an underrated guy is Rex Yoshida. 
hopefully. Um, and then in terms of first base, Ryan Mountcastle, he's on a one-year deal. We traded for him last year. Worst case is he can be a piece that we do at the trade deadline. Kyle Schwarber, also a one-year deal. Figured our outfield was stacked, moved him to first. Maybe can, and he seems like a pretty good DH guy as well. Robert Faulkner, I don't think he's ready yet. Uh, he really, really struggled in spring training. Even changed his batting stance up, and he still struggled. So hopefully he can get on track as well. Now, Miles Dwyer's interesting. I think he's been the most interesting guy in the series so far, in terms of my eyes. So he was originally an outfielder when we signed him as an undrafted free agent, rookie free agent in season one. We realized his arm wasn't great. It's kind of improving, but it was really bad at first. So then, and with the draft of Kevin Soriano and signing other guys in free agency in the outfield, we realized uh, he has the weakest arm, and we didn't have a second baseman. So I moved him to second base. His overall moved up. He did get called up, but then broke his forearm, and he was off to a pretty solid start. Absolutely killing it, all that. But sadly, his campaign was cut short due to a broken forearm. Last year, he came back, and he surprised me to the point where he became an all-star. Not just an all-star, an all-star starter. So I'm hoping he has another full year of health and see what he can do as an encore. Is it just a one-year thing, or is he going to be a diamond in a rough that we find? We'll find out. So Luis Uyas is a solid pickup, I think, for one year. He is also one of the first guys that we might trade if we are not doing well. Tyler Whittaker doesn't seem like he's he's yes and no about. Now we haven't given him a complete fair shot at third base, but it's seeming like he's not the guy. Gregory Saucedo, who is younger, slowly creeping up. Phil Watkins, who we traded for from the Guardians. He seems to be slowly creeping up as well. And then Ray Roy Shembrowski, who is a good supporter of the channel as well. We drafted him. He's only C potential for now, but I want to see what he can do in double A as well. So obviously Yu Chang is basically going to be a utility guy. I'm not worried about him. Eric Brown, I want to see what he can do. Um, he might be the third baseman more than anything. But I want to see what Matt Lehman can do. Last offseason, we traded him, traded for him in Toronto, kind of gambled on him, moved him to shortstop. And I think if he didn't get injured with his calf for two, three months, I think he could have been an all-star as well. And the errors definitely have to improve. But the way I see it is, it was his first year at shortstop in the big leagues. It's a hard transition, and we just basically kind of threw him out there. And uh, hopefully it can improve. Again, it stinks that it was 11 errors, but I also say, hey, for his first year at shortstop, I don't think that's too bad. Then Alex Verdugo. He was a guy that we signed in the offseason last year. He's on a $5.5 million deal. He didn't have... He actually had a pretty pretty good season. Um, just... I don't know. He was very 50-50 with me. Plus, on top of that, Milt Benjamin who would have got called up last year if he didn't tear his MCL, is in AAA, younger, and not far behind him. It begs the question, is Verdugo a trading piece? Because I don't think our pitching staff is still very good, but who knows. But Milt Benjamin, I, I was so tempted to call him up, but I think our outfield is too stacked. 
I want him to get the reps that he missed those last couple of months with the MCL tear down in Rochester. But he's definitely the number one guy that we're going to call up without a doubt in September when healthy. And then Elijah Green. First round pick a couple of years ago before we even started the series. or He was the first round pick of 2022. So he had a really, I mean, we called him up for September call-ups. He tore it up. He struggled a little bit in his sophomore year. We got Drew Gilbert, and we basically sent him down last year, and he flourished. He went from, I believe, like a low 71 to a 77 overall. As much as I wanted him to be up here, I realized maybe going to Rochester was the best thing, and it is because he is right on Drew Gilbert's tail, and he's three years younger, and his contract is also a little bit cheaper. So Drew Gilbert might be a trading piece, but he did also have a career year as well. So that could be another interesting thing. And then, lastly, Kevin Soriano, the first draft pick in this series, the man, the myth, the legend himself. He has surprised me. I hope he gets more than a B potential because as of right now, the highest he's going to be is an 85. But at 23 years old, he has two all-star nods, including one starting himself like not me switching him out with someone he was an outright starter for the national league at 22 years old i want to see if he can continue it i want to see him hit 30 home runs and 100 rbis before i end this episode i forgot to show you guys the awards so pete alonzo won it last year vladdy previous year cy young was Shohei otani Josh Rojas won the batting title. Taylor Rogers won reliever of the year. Kevin Soriano, well, I believe, I know that was last year, but De Los Santos won it for the Diamondbacks. Juan Soto, our former national who signed with the Mets, won the Hank Aaron. Aaron Nola won the Golden Glove. JT, Vlad, Ha Sung Kim. Manny Machado, Tommy Edmond, Gabriel Martinez, Harrison Bader, Mookie Betts, Shohei One Slugger, Will Smith, Pete Alonzo, Ozzy, Manny, Dansby, Juan, Mookie, and Elroy. And Dansby Swanson won the postseason MVP, but the Astros won the World Series as well. And then for the American League, Jordan won MVP, Tristan McKenzie won Cy Young, Miguel won the batting title, Scott Barlow won reliever, rookie of the year, Henry Perez, shout out FG and his A's, Aaron Judge won the Hank Aaron Award, Julio Uyas won Golden Glove, Adley Rushman, Tristan Casa, Andres Gimenez, Ryan Mahan, David Fletcher, Stephen Kwan, Byron Buxton, Aldous Garcia, John Carlos, Salvador Perez, Joey Menendez, who we traded to the Twins, good for him, Jose Altuve, Jose Ramirez, Jeremy Pena, Jordan Alvarez, Kyle Tucker, Aaron Judge, Jordan Alvarez won the postseason MVP, and Brandon Drury won the World Series MVP next episode will be opening day for Washington and the Rochester Red Wings and maybe double A but my expectations for this year is to hopefully not get a hundred losses but we have the toughest division in baseball I think in terms of talent the Mets are loaded the Braves are loaded Marlins have Vlad Guerrero and a couple of other studs and then the Phillies they still got some guys as well but we're also one of the youngest teams compared to our divisions as well. But let me know down in the comments what you think our record will be. Maybe who you think could be surprise sleepers to be all-stars. Or maybe who you think 
maybe have a down year. But if you made it this far in the video, you guys are awesome. And I'll see you in the city of brotherly love for the opening day and the start of season four. Peace.